Why does it suck to be born a sawfish? Here's the problem. You've got a full-sized saw attached to your face, and you're about to be born through your mother. So, how exactly does that work? Do you just slice your way out like a chainsaw baby? Is she gonna survive this? Did evolution even think this through? Turns out, yeah, kind of. Right now, you're still inside, floating, fully formed, almost three feet long. But every one of those deadly teeth is wrapped in a soft, jelly-like sheath. It's like bubble wrap, for murder tools. You come out armed, but on safety mode. And then, splash. You shoot out headfirst into warm, muddy water. No applause, no instructions, just chaos. You can't really swim. Your massive saw snags on everything. You drift, spinning like a confused helicopter. And everything around you? Hungry. Your mom? Gone. Not because she's mean, because she's smart. You're on your own now. Your only plan? Don't die. You bury yourself in the mud and breathe as quietly as possible. Any bubble, any flick of movement could get you eaten by a bird, a shark, or whatever nightmare has teeth today. A few days later, those jelly sheaths fall off. Now the saw is real. You start slicing like a toddler with a weapon. It's not elegant, but it works. You're still tiny, still clueless, but you're alive. And for a sawfish, that's a miracle. Day two, you're hungry. Not, I could eat hungry. Not, where's lunch, hungry. The kind where your stomach cramps and your gills feel tight. You need food, now. You spot something twitching in the mud, small, shiny. You lunge, too fast. Your snout scrapes a rock so hard it sends a shock through your skull. You freeze. The world spins. A sharp pain shoots between your eyes. You taste blood. That thing you saw? Long gone. You drift, dizzy, embarrassed, and hungrier than before. This face of yours, it's more curse than weapon. You swing at leaves. Miss. You jab at a stick. Miss again. Your saw drags through the water like an anchor. And you? You look like a broom trying to fight. But something moves again, closer this time. A real fish. Alive. You hold still. You aim. This time, slower. One twitch. A jab. Smack. Contact. You feel it hit. The fish shudders and sinks. You did it. Your saw worked. You're shaking from the hit. Not from fear. Adrenaline. You grab the fish. Clumsy bite. Half of it slips away. But it's enough. Food. Your first real bite. It's warm. Soft. Strange. But it quiets the ache in your belly. Just then, the water pressure shifts. Something's behind you. You don't look. You run. A cloud of sand kicks up behind you. You dive. Bury yourself, heart pounding in your throat. Nothing happens. But next time, it might. You're one year old now, about 1.2 meters long, roughly the size of an alto saxophone, if it had teeth and rage issues. You're bigger, heavier, sharper. Your saw is no longer a problem. It's a part of you. You've learned how to move through the water without dragging your face like dead weight. You've figured out how to strike how to aim, how to feel movement before it even starts. Today feels different. The current is calm. The water is warmer than usual. You drift through a mangrove channel, half hidden by roots and shadow. Something stirs in the distance. You don't rush. You wait. You feel it before you see it. Tiny electric pulses in the water, twitching like Morse code. There's something nearby. Not small. Not weak. A mullet fish. You stay still, let the current carry you, then shift slightly to line up the shot. Then, snap. You strike. The saw slashes forward, fast and low, slicing through silt and skin. A silver flash tumbles through the water, wounded, spinning. 
You move in before it can react. Jaw, bite, twist. It's done. But then, a shadow slides across the sand. A reminder. Just because you're a predator, doesn't mean you're not still prey. Quick question before we move on. You've survived your first kill. But let's pause for a second. If you were a sawfish for one day, what's the first thing you'd try to slice? Drop it in the comments. Be creative. Be cursed. You're 10 years old now, more than 3 meters long, roughly the size of a small car. If it had a giant blade growing out of its face and unresolved trauma issues, the sun hangs high above the mangroves, burning down through water thick with silt and shadows. You slide between the tangled roots like a living torpedo, quiet, focused, tracing the familiar paths you've ruled for years. Just ahead, the mud ripples, soft, rhythmic pulses hitting your snout. A mullet, maybe two. You lower yourself closer to the bottom, easing sideways through the roots. The current is calm, the water, warm. Everything tells you this is the moment. You wait, you angle, you strike. The saw slices clean through water and flesh. One mullet jerks and spins, then floats limp. Easy hit. You move in to bite. That's when the water behind you explodes. No warning, no time, just pain. A crushing weight slams onto your back, claws dig in, and something bites into your side with a jaw built for breaking. You thrash hard, first left, then right, but the grip only tightens. You still can't see it, but you already know what it is. Crocodile. Salt water. Big. Your tail smashes through roots and silt, your body twisting in every direction, but it doesn't let go. You roll hard under it, dragging your saw low and fast across its belly. First swipe. Nothing. Second. Still no release. Third, finally, a hit. Not deep, but sharp enough to make it flinch. That's all you need. You kick off the bottom and tear through the shallows, smashing through roots, diving under logs, pushing every muscle toward escape. Behind you, the river churns, heavy and wild. You don't look back. You don't have time. You wedge yourself between two tree trunks, barely breathing. Blood trails down your side. Every heartbeat hurts. But you're alive. At 15 years old, you've grown to nearly four meters long, about the size of a small aluminum fishing boat. You don't hide anymore. When you move, everything else clears out. You're not just another fish in the system. You're a force. And yet, something's off in the water today. It's not the current or the temperature. It's the scent. A heavy, invisible signal drifts through the river. You feel it in your snout, in your spine. Hormones. A female is nearby. You don't know exactly where she is, but your instincts guide you, smooth, steady gliding through the shallow channels until there she is. She's larger than you, calm, floating with slow confidence across a warm sand patch. You approach without rushing, keeping your movements soft and your body low. She notices you, but doesn't leave just shifts her body slightly, curving toward your direction like a silent yes. You circle her once, then again. The water feels thick with tension. Her tail brushes yours, a small jolt running through you both. You move in closer. With one practiced motion, you slide up alongside her and mount from above, anchoring with your fins, balancing your long frame as the water presses around you. There's no sound, no chaos, no fight. Just seconds stretched thin, instinct unfolding with perfect rhythm. Then, it's over. You slide off gently, drifting beside her. She lingers for a moment, then turns and disappears into the murky water. You don't follow. You just watch the silt settle behind her. You're thirty years old now, over six meters long, the size of a limousine that somehow decided to live underwater. You've outlived storms crocodiles and nets. You've survived everything nature threw at you, but today isn't nature's doing. The hum in the water isn't a predator. It's a boat, metal, heavy, and human. You feel the vibration before the sound. 
Then the pain hits. A spear tears through your side, followed by another. You twist, but ropes pull tight around your saw. The surface breaks above you. Light, noise, chaos, and hands drag you out of the only world you've ever known. The air burns your gills. Your body thrashes for a few seconds, then stills. Hours later, your meat lies clean, pale, and cold on a silver tray. Somewhere in a high-end restaurant, a waiter sets your fillet beside a glass of white wine. The menu calls it rare catch. They smile, unaware that catching you was illegal. You lasted 30 years in the wild, fought everything that could kill you, until the only thing that did wore a suit. Think this was bad? Somewhere out there, another animal's having an even worse day. Go see for yourself. Next video's waiting. Don't leave them out there alone.